Hello everybody, this is Noel Zire. I'm a technical artist and I'm going to be trying to show some tools that I've been working on for my employer, which is uh, Shell Games in Pittsburgh. So, you know, the reason I'm wanting to try and do that is to, you know, throw things out there, bounce off ideas, and if anyone has any suggestions, by all means, you know, write it to the comments and all that. And also, I'd like to throw some of this stuff out there to help give it uh, give other people some ideas and you know strengthen and all that so in this video I'm going to be showing off the uh, a Maya asset browser I created in uh, Python and uh, quick credit where credits due I uh, I'm basing a lot of this off of uh, a UI that was created by a former coworker supervisor of mine with uh, when I was doing an internship at 2k Marin so uh, a lot of the UI design and XML sort of structure thing, uh, a lot of the file structure that's used is based off of a asset browser created by Eric Colert for, uh, for 2K Marin. And I added my own little twists and, uh, you know, obviously things were a little bit different since instead of in Max script for 3D Studio, it's in Python for Maya. And I added uh, a few, uh, a few different things in the way it works, and uh, also it runs perforce commands. Which, for anyone who's unfamiliar with perforce, it's a common version control uh, software used in video games. To uh, where you basically you upload versions of certain files uh, up to a server, so then they can be passed around and also reverted back to just in case any mistakes happen. So without any further ado, I'll just kind of jump into it. So open it up. First time you open it up, it just kind of, it looks a little blank. Uh, it looks kind of blank, you know, nothing uh, really going on. You don't really see any assets or anything. So first thing you always have to do is uh, set the project. So it uh, checks a folder. I'll get more into how it's working underneath the hood later. First, I'll just start off with uh, with uh, with you know just showing it being used, and then after that, I'll show the way uh, the way it works with all the files and everything, and then I'll show the script. So, first thing you do is just kind of set a project. I'll just go ahead and set to uh, Lexica character here, and it autofills the thing and uh, yeah so the way I, I sort of laid it out and this can be completely arbitrary I just kind of break it down into these two types here and they can be used in any way just as long as you know consistent and all that I break it down by category which is the use of the uh, the asset and then within the categories then you can have types which is you know uh, sort of breakdown of what uh, what type of thing it's for so if I jump over to rigs see this is like character types or props or anything like that and then within each of these then uh, uh, within each of the types then you have the assets the actual assets we're working with so Basically, if you look at the sort of breakdown here, then the, uh, for each one there's this uh, there's this icon, this thumbnail of uh, of the asset to show you know visually what it is, and then in here there is some information like the file path, the name of the asset, any comments, and then. Also, there is uh, some perforce information there as well, as well as uh, last modified date. So, with each one, then you can just either open it, open and check out on perforce, reference, or import it. So if you just open it up, there you go, wait for it to load, and we have our rig file open. Now. You know, this is all well and good if you have the file that you're that you're actually opening, but since this is for, you know, just kind of passing along to people who may not have the files, you know, it's they're not always going to have 
uh, they're not always going to have the file locally. So since this has perforce functionality built in, uh, in this case, if I jump over to the Griff asset, then uh, then uh, if you go down here, you'll see file not found. And that's because we don't have the file locally. So all you have to do is you just say open and it'll give you this little pop-up, but it says it doesn't exist locally, but asks if you want to sync. If you say yes, then it will load it on perforce. And now we have the file locally. And then also it's worth mentioning that then, you know, this just simply works like this, where you just say open and check out. And if I open up P4V, go to the pending, and then refresh, you'll now see that we have that file checked out. So it's fairly simple to use. Just go ahead and revert this. And bring up Maya again. So, aside from this user facing side where you can just open up the files, I wanted to open it up to make it fairly easy to edit and add the uh, entries here. So if you go over here, uh, you'll see that it's kind of just grayed out right now because, you know, I don't want people to be able to edit it willy nilly. What you basically do is you just say start changes, give it a sec to think. It's uh, moving a little slower probably because I'm going over VPN. Usually it's a little faster when, when you're at work on the actual local network. So if I jump over to, uh, you know, if I jump over to maybe rigs and go to the cat, you can see it basically fills, uh, it just kind of auto brings up the information here. And if I jump over here, it's now selected over there. And, you know, you can basically, you can kind of just edit things fairly easily. So you don't like the category rigs, you just say rig, you do that, and it updates here, and then, you know, it's it's already it's already updated in the other side. If you close and reopen, it's still there. So basically you just kinda you can go through and edit things fairly easily. Jump over here, you can say resources, you can actually change this to you know capitalized you can say stage for cinematics. And then if we jump back over here, it's already updated over there. You can have it point to a different file. It'll update the, this uh, field over here and have it point to a different uh, file. And then, and then if you go down here, you can change the, uh, the comments for it. So you can say, stage asset for creating cinematics. If we jump back over here, it is now it is now updated in the body area here. So say we open up this file, uh, we look at this file and we we realize we don't want it to quite look like that. We want it to look a little differently. Or, you know, maybe the assets actually changed and you just need to uh, have an update. So if we open it up, uh, you see that it's actually checked out by, uh, by someone else. But that's just, uh, that's a part of the, uh, the Perforce tool set that I wrote. And I'll probably make another video about that later. But if we jump over here, you can see the stage for cinematics and you see the file here. So if I wanted to change it, all I have to do is say generate camera and then just kind of center the uh, center the thing in here. And I can do a software render, which will just kind of render it in the regular view and see, there you go, it is, there it is. Or you can do hardware render, which will do basically just a one frame play blast and then save that file as well. So there you go. But let's just go ahead and stick with the software render and see now that it, it's updated here. And, you know, no hitches. It's just kind of fairly easy to do, ideally. And uh, 
Yeah. And then also, you know, one thing that I haven't uh, that I haven't really shown is, you know, it's fairly easy to delete or add new assets. So, you know, let's say we don't really need resources anymore. So all I have to do is just say delete resources, and see now it's no longer in the uh, in the categories here. And I want to create a new one, which uh, you know we'll just. We'll create a new scene. Oh, we'll just create something in here just really quickly and save it. So here you go. This little cube. I mean, sphere. My bad. Apparently I'm bad at thinking on my feet. Here you go. And save that out. You can, uh, yeah, we have this folder, video test stuff. We can call this a dragon. So we have our dragon here, our amazing dragon. And... Say we actually just want to have this in a completely different category. Just create a new category. We'll say video test stuff. It creates this and it all kind of fills out this this little area here. But we're gonna call this one mythological creatures. And then jump over here. Can say dragon, and then we just point to this scene here that we have open, and then we'll generate the camera for the uh, for the thumbnail software render. Do that, and then we'll go ahead and say remove camera, and it removes the uh, the assets that we just brought in. And if we jump over here, we now have the dragon here under the category video test stuff. And it's all kind of arranged in alphabetical order. And if we close and reopen the asset browser, you will now see that it is still there because we've basically been editing stuff on a file level as we're going through. I'll go into that more later and just again, sort of showing off the functionality first. So, you know, we go through and say, some dragon made for the video and down here this perforce comments uh, and for anyone unfamiliar with perforce as you update you're supposed to basically uh, as you update your files you're supposed to give sort of descriptions of what you're what you're changing so that way if things need to be rolled back people can check the log and see what's been changed in certain things so this is basically what what happens here is you can say, you know, added dragon asset, deleted resources uh, category, and if we were to say submit, it just gives us a reminder that we're about to update the project library and that it'll affect everyone. We're actually not going to continue because, uh, you know, we don't really want to actually do this. But it would just basically, it would save that out and update it for everyone. So the next time someone else opens up, they'll have the, uh, the new file or the new changes that have been made. So instead, I'll just go ahead and cancel. And if I jump back over here, you'll see that resources back and the video test stuff that I did before isn't there anymore. So it basically just reverts back to the version that's on the depot. So, you know, no harm done.